Well, then let's start. Um, welcome to everybody uh, for our Debian live talk. This is Marco, he does some stuff. I'm Daniel, and I do also some stuff in Debian, and together we do Debian live. And Yes. <laughs> Uh, the outline of our talk is today that the talk is very simple. You do not have to worry about anything. If you don't understand something, just shout, because my English is very bad. Um, in the first step, we show you um, why we do um, Debian Live, why it's needed. And then we talk about how it works, and then we show it to you. First of all, a live system is not very different from a normal system. Basically, uh, it is booting without uh, having to install the, the operating system before. Uh, most of the time, you have a read-only medium. Nowadays, you can also use USB sticks, with, uh, which are uh, quite uh, on fashion. Typically, because we don't have uh, read-write medias, uh, the installation is non-persistent. That means if you um, RMRF your root, you can boot again and everything is back. The most important thing about live systems is that they do not alter the, the installed systems. means you can do it on your production server for rescue purposes or everything else, and uh, it doesn't kill your hard disks. As you can see, there are a lot of use cases for live systems, for example, for end users, if they want to know the, uh, if they want to see the newest and greatest uh, bling bling. It's great for teachers because they can give it for free to students, uh, for example, uh, to show uh, or distribute photos. Developers, developers can use it too for uh, having a consistent and not changing uh, test environment. For system, administrator, for system administrators, it's great to have a rescue system. And basically, just everyone needs it. But what is wrong with current live systems? One last year, in February 2006, we started to make thoughts about live systems. And most of the uh, points you see here uh, were valid then. Nowadays, some, some points of them change it, but not all. From a very Debian-specific uh, point of view, all these live systems uh, are developed outside of Debian. So Debian does not have an official uh, live distribution or live uh, system. Most of the uh, live uh, systems out there do mixed distributions because they, for example, based on testing, uh, but include newer stuff from SID to f uh, fix breakages. We don't do that. Most of the live distributions uh, only support i386 or nowadays also AMD64 uh, because it's the one the most mainstream users use. Often they change some package behaviors like they set their custom wallpapers or uh, they uh, change fancy init color, init systems uh, colors. Uh, they're stripping packages, for example, by removing documentation so that they have more space on the live system. They're including unofficial packages. Um, most importantly, they're almost always not using the Debian kernel. They package and maintain their own, own kernel tree, which is crap. Um, due to that, uh, every live system you will find is for uh, a specific purpose means uh, you can't use Knopix uh, very well for rescue purposes, or you can't use Knopix. Uh, there is no Knopix for, let's say, Spark or Alpha architectures. Most of the live distributions are not available um, as a USB stick, or they only ship on DVD media, or they don't offer netboot uh, technologies. And uh, at the end, you see there is no one, uh, one size fits all. You need to customize your own life system. And if you want to do that, you can buy books which, tell, uh, which teach you about uh, remastering Knopix. And trust us, trust that the fact, trust, uh, no, um, 
just the fact that such books exist uh, should tell you that it's um, uh, a wrong way to uh, remaster a system if you have to read a book first. Now, as I said, uh, Debian needs a known life system because uh, it would be uh, or should be an official sub-project so that it ref reflects the official state of the distribution. Uh, means if someone wants to know, does Debian testing today support whatever hardware, you can say test this live CD. If it works for you, it works in Debian because it's the same. We want to have it uh, run on as many architectures as possible. Uh, we do not change packages. We um, buy um, the Debian maintainers to fix it, uh, their packages so that they work on a live system too. We do not include unofficial packages. We, we want to taint Debian. Um, and most importantly, we use the normal unchanged Debian kernel. Uh, means if you go to your local hardware vendor, uh, boot the system, and see it works with that kernel, you can trust that if you install it, if you buy it and install it at home with Debian, it works too. Okay, now it, it, it comes to the how part. My English is a uh, worse there <laughs> than of Daniel. <laughs> and we will see the uh, the typical boot system process. All system, both uh, live and not non-live, just power ups. Try to boot uh, the BIOS. The BIOS. Uh, try to boot uh, from some media like uh, hard disks, uh, uh, recent BIOS from network, from USB sticks. Then um, the bootloader that uh, um, try to uh, boot Linux. Try to because uh, uh, it needs to find the right partition where Linux is stored. Then Linux should execute um, an initial program Process the first process in uh, from the the media found by itself. It was now uh, it's the, the things are li a little different because Linux uh, uh, boots a small root file system previously called initred. Now it is an initram fs, which is a CPIO archive of a small root file system compressed <coughs> that um, have the um, the duty to find the real root file system okay the when uh, the um, the nitram fs uh, could uh, found this um, real root file system it executes the real in it on it this apply for uh, both types of systems then a Debian Live system, what uh, what does of different uh, Linux loads the initramfs. Then the initramfs uh, scans all the devices connected to the system, all block devices, so so also optical devices, to a particular um, configured uh, the directory, and finds um, what is. Uh, the read-only file system. We, you, you could um, imagine a file image on the on the CD, for example. But not only that. Then uh, the the trick is to produce um, a writable file system from this uh, image, this read-only image, and a RAM disk. This is um, the Union FS uh, working. Um, so Union FS um, can provide us a writable root file system from a read-only media using a RAM disk. Okay. Then um, our system uh, live uh, in the RAM FS package does some, some little magic to configure users, to configure hardware, prepare the network. Okay, when uh, it, all it's ready, 
it, it launched uh, the real in it. The in live initram FS package is a, a fork uh, of Casper, which uh, were used formerly on uh, the first, the second uh, live uh, CDs from Ubuntu. We took uh, some extended it, uh, then it was re recently forked, and uh, in seed and testing there is this package in uh, etch, it's still called Casper. It's uh, under. Um, development because not all the features are uh, so stable or so beautiful. But uh, some future uh, per permits to boot from a compressed uh, file image like SquashFS and not compressed file image like uh, an X2, uh, X2 image file. Uh, or plain directory. Plain directory is uh, mainly suited for uh, network booting. Uh, is not uh, with uh, the optical uh, media in mind. Um, it can uh, boot a system from all the block device, so hard disk, USB uh, sticks, also um, anything that uh, could be recognized by the kernel at the start. Then um, two different methods of uh, network uh, device are provided, but uh, more can be added. Uh, uh, formerly NFS and uh, CIFS that was uh, implemented uh, because we, f we found some buggy routers that uh, doesn't couple well with NFS. Strange thing. And then um, Encryption could be used, so the, 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 the image file could be encrypted, and uh, the people uh, who, who use it at, uh, at the beginning of the boot process m must provide the password to access uh, the whole system. Uh, also, other features are persistence, so um, if you we, we boot the system, we um, modify it, uh, change uh, maybe in a desktop environment uh, where the icons are, uh, the desktop uh, background, uh, install some other uh, software. Uh, if, we pro if we have on the system a uh, um, writable device, like a uh, USB stick or a partition, we, cu we could, um, in the next reboot, have the system as uh, we modified it. So the, all the work could be uh, uh, made be some, some way permanent. If you do that on a USB stick, you can, uh, could bring yourself, uh, the, the stick with uh, yourself, go on another machine, and boot the same system with the same uh, uh, sets of windows open, maybe also. Uh, see the difference between persistent snapshots and multiple root FS images are just uh, the how those uh, problem is is uh, resolved so uh, persistence means that all the right uh, all the mod modify you you do on um, on your system are written di directly on uh, media snapshots means that uh, you decide or the reboot decide when you the um, your modify should be written on a media, and the multiple root FS image means that you could uh, add on uh, a remaster of the CD just the difference with, um, of your system, and then in uh, in maybe a multi session uh, CD or DVD you could uh, bring with, with yourself uh, your uh, modify. Uh, okay, but it, it configures at boot some uh, some hardware. The keyboard uh, it permits uh, you to uh, read uh, some boot parameters at uh, the bootloader. So you could uh, could have uh, a live system that uh, is well tailored for uh, different languages, different kind of uh, setups. Also, it supports uh, at boot uh, to choose um, a particular set of um, 
a live image to boot. So you can, uh, with the same media, you could have uh, a KDE desktop, uh, a rescue system, or a more complex uh, system. And uh, then you, you could also, um, yeah, it, it could also accept proceeds like uh, debconf proceeds. So you could uh, pass uh, them a file or um, a list of uh, variable uh, contents pair and uh, have uh, some um, paca Debian packages reconfigured before the, the boot of the real system. And uh, that's uh, the how. And uh, Daniel will tell you <laughs> how to create. OK. Uh, life in ThermFS is the black magic used at the boot time inside the boot, uh, life system. And life helper is, this, is the set of scripts you use on your host system to create the life system. At the moment, uh, it's uh, split it in up to 65 uh, individual sh uh, shell scripts, so it's pretty flexible. Um, the standard way is to uh, run all the four stages, means in the first stage you bootstrap. This is done by just calling CD bootstrap or D bootstrap, you can choose it as an option. Uh, in the change root um, stage, you, uh, all packages uh, you want to have on your live system are installed. Uh, we support local uh, packages. Um, that means you can uh, throw all your third-party zap files into a directory and they get automatically installed into the live system. We support uh, a set of uh, predefined uh, package lists. Means if you want to say, oh, I just want KDE and just one package in addition, you say, build me KDE. Uh, and that's very easy. You don't have to know which KDE packages you all need to include. In the binary stage, uh, we built the final uh, ISO image if you want a CD-ROM or the USB image or a netboot tarball. And optionally, uh, you can do a source uh, tarball or a source image. It doesn't matter. Um, this is particularly important because most of the uh, life distributions you find out there do not provide this uh, possibility. Means if you want to redistribute this binary image uh, and uh, you are obliged to the GPL, uh, you have a problem. Where do you get the source from? And since Debian always distributes binary and sources uh, at the same time, we do it of course too. So this is a very easy possibility to comply to the GPL. Although Life Helper is a framework to build your own uh, Life CD, and you're very welcome to try it, um, we do. Uh, we have set up an auto builder on life.debian.net, where we auto build um, KDE desktop images, GNOME desktop images, and XFC desktop images. These are, from the pa package selection point of view, um, the same as you would uh, do a regular DI install uh, and select desktop environment. These are for Edge, they are built manually uh, once we do a new uh, Life Helper upload because there are some improvements always. Um, for Lenny, we do weekly builds and for SID, uh, we do daily builds. This is uh, mostly because uh, the server has too few um, storage. As soon as we get uh, some more, we could do daily uh, builds of uh, Lenny too. We also have a uh, not so fancy um, CGI script which allows um, uh, an end user which has no clue about uh, Linux or Debian in general uh, to get his own customized um, life system. He can go to the website, click there, um, select options, uh, press the button, wait some time, and he gets an email with a new URL where he can download the image. Uh, at the moment, it offers just the basic functionality, means about uh, 50 out of uh, maybe 80 options you can specify. <laughs> um, but for the web CGI, it's enough. Although Debian Life is already one year old, um, we still have some plans. And that means, for example, that um, we really try to upload, um, to arrange the upload of official images to cdimage.debian.org uh, really soon now. 
At the moment, um, the only architecture uh, specific part of the whole thing is the bootloader uh, magic used to create the ISO image. Um, as Life Helper is independent from Debian CD, we need to we needed to uh, reinvent the wheel there. Uh, that's why at the moment, uh, just i386 and AMD64 are working re reliable. Um, yeah, boot, um, on PowerPC, I fixed it almost and Spark and Alpha are uh, really soon to come. The really, really uh, bleeding edge now is that Otavio prepared uh, a UDEP uh, which hooks into the eye so that you can uh, create a, a live CD including the eye which does not fetch the packages from the internet or from the CD but just unpack the SquashFS image to the hard disk. As Life Helper is the back end of everything, uh, it's not very useful or handy for uh, real dump end users. That's why uh, Chris Lamp uh, will implement uh, um, a graphical application, um, which is very easy for end users. He does it on behalf of Google Summer of Code, and he has already uh, done some mockups, which are quite promising. Unfortunately, there are some inconsistencies in Debian, meaning um, some applications to read out their, uh, re rely on having some specific paths uh, they can read out in PROC. That's why, for example, uh, some GNU step applications do not work uh, in Edge without uh, recompiling them. We contacted the maintainer of those packages and they are going to be fixed. So in the future, we hope that almost every software is fixed upstream so that they uh, work um, uh, so that they work good in a life environment. Depending on the further development of the initramfs tools, we maybe are able to add uh, also looks into life in Tramfs. And something very beautiful is if we could uh, support resuming. I don't have uh, looked into it much, but it's possible uh, that you can resume a full KDE session in 10 seconds after um, you pressed enter on the bootloader. But this is still future. <laughs> and now I can show you uh, how we build the images. At the moment you need to at the moment you need to be root because if you are not root, see the um, no. X term does not support larger fonts than this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did already, it's on huge. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, you need to be root, that's the problem because CD Bootstrap does not allow to bootstrap um, as a user. Uh, it tries to mount root and would fail. Um, these are all the helpers, you don't want to know about them, that's why we have uh, a short we have a, a short wrapper about them. And now, let's launch it. As you see, there is in, by default, you don't need to configure anything. It just builds you a standard image. Standard means every package of priority standard or higher. Um, if you uh, want to include KDE, you can add that with a flag. If you want to include your own uh, very uh, special package, you can include uh, this too. As you can see, um, CD Bootstrap is already nearly done, and the next stage would be to install the kernel. By using CD Bootstrap and D Bootstrap extensively, we found, uh, by the way, a few bugs in them. And it's quite hard to rely on them because it is, um, if CID is broken, you lose everything. So um, a lot of users always report Life Helper doesn't work because it fails to bootstrap and they can't see the difference. That's a bit hard. 
Now it fetches the kernel. It's almost done. <laughs> As you can see, it, uh, it installed Casper because I'm building an edge image at, at the moment. Now we install the few required packages by Casper, like eject, so that uh, once you boot, uh, you shut down your live system, the CD, if existing, uh, gets thrown out automatically. And now the SquashFS image is done. This is uh, almost the. Uh, the longest sub part of Life Helper because it needs a lot of disk I.O. and CPU and yeah. Here uh, our image is uh, an unaltered Debian system means uh, there is still, still some stuff in uh, user share doc and the man pages and that's why it's pretty large for a just basic standard image. Um, it is about 80 megabyte of size. Of course, we also include memtester for those who need them. Now the ISO image was created. Yep. And we can boot it. By default, um, we have configured that the uh, syslinux bootloader is used on i386, uh, but with a simple flag you can use uh, grub, which is uh, more handier, but doesn't work on some old crappy BIOSes. That's why it's not the default. As you can see, um, it has already booted into live in DramaFS, now it loads the SquashFS image. At this point, your usual hard disk would be mounted. Um, because, KQ, uh, because QMU is pretty slow with disk I.O., um, this takes longer than, of course, in real time on real hardware. And now, uh, just the normal uh, sysv init boots, like a regular Debian system. And since I didn't um, uh, include XORG, uh, it just goes to the console with an auto login. Of course, you can uh, disable auto login uh, or XORG auto login with boot parameters. We have a list of cheat codes like you maybe know from Knopix. And now we would be at the end. And if you have questions, comments, and suggestion, suggestions, we are very welcome. Uh, to say that. <laughs> we, are, we don't see both so good. Uh, what's on the green sheet, please? Okay. If nobody has questions, you can attend tomorrow a buff, and in that buff, Marco will teach you how to build your own life system with Life Helper, which is very easy. Okay, I say just the last sentence, and anytime you're welcome to join the mailing list, it's very friendly, and you can also join the IRC channel. Is it a release goal to release Lenny with a live CD? For me and for us, yes. <laughs> You asked if it's a release call for Lenny, right? Yes, okay. yes, okay. For me, my, for, uh, for me personally, yes, it is. But um, as the release team just uh, submitted the mail to pro 
checked or released, I don't remember, uh, how to submit um, release goals. Um, I need to read that through and try to submit it. Um, is Debian Live already used in some larger environments as a productive system, or is it just still experimental? And in the United States, uh, it is used uh, by um, the Safe Desk, that um, is a firm that sells uh, um, distributed system. They have um, hotels like for clients uh, as uh, hotels. They sell um, uh, small uh, diskless systems that um, boots from uh, Debian Live. And um, they, it, it is used at uh, the University of Padua for uh, the, um, their development uh, laboratories, so the, the students can have uh, <coughs> a, a, a network boot system that, they, that is the same that the teacher can uh, uh, give to them on a live DVD. And they use the persi persistence of uh, USB key to do some work at uh, the classroom and then bring uh, that work at home in the w having the same uh, environment with the same windows opened um, regarding the, um, the fact of being able to deliver with uh, Lenny um, is it possible to have a, a CD where a DVD actually where uh, the user could either put a live CD or uh, have a Debian installer, a regular CD uh, plus a source. So it can be convenient to distribute in an exhibition? Yes, it is uh, the, um, the work in progress uh, that, we, that he and uh, Otavio did uh, at uh, this Deb camp and uh, the major has a Debian installer that could be booted straight on, like a standard Debian installer images. Uh, the Debian installer, um, the same media could boot Debian Live, and the same media could install Debian, install Debian Live. And uh, about uh, the question before, I forgot to mention Web Converger. It's an application uh, by KE. Uh, to do the kiosk, internet kiosks. Uh, just an addition, uh, with, with uh, Life Helper uh, 1.0 tilt A15-1, which I upload after the talk, uh, you can have uh, a regular live session and a regular DI, which does the normal stuff uh, within one media, and you can select at the boot time which one you want to boot. Um, this has just the disadvantage that it take, it consumes a bit much space because if you have 650 uh, megabyte uh, CD-ROMs and you lose uh, 50 megabyte for the installer, um, that's a bit much um, and that's why we uh, try to push that live installer thing. But you're always free to use the regular uh, Debian installer which fetches packages from the net. And it's just a different flag. If you uh, say live installer enabled, you get live installer. If you say live Debian installer, you get uh, the regular Debian installer enabled. And just to further comment on, basically, um, I've based uh, my business around Daniel's work. And uh, Web Converger is a web kiosk system. And, and I have uh, customers which, uh, which include banks and... Um, because I, did, I didn't really see, I thought my, my product would be for you know, inter, internet kiosks and libraries and museums, but uh, people see these live systems as a very secure way of getting onto the, uh, onto the internet. So, so banks have, are interested in other security type stuff. Military, I've had inquiries from, from uh, something in, with a .mil address. So it's all, it's all pretty exciting. So I want to thank uh, Daniel and Marco for that. And uh, if you need a web kiosk system, please uh, look at my system. <laughs> and uh, it's great because um, my business model is just customizing, building um, with Live Helper um, CDs for my, for my customers' requirements. So they pop in the CD and they get the right locale, the right homepage they want to go to. So it's fantastic. So thanks. You too.
a question for you now. Uh, <laughs> well, also for you. But usually with uh, live systems, the, well, one of the problems I see with uh, sending them to users is that the installations are, well, uh, CDs are a slow medium. So, uh, uh, I mean, if you are working with this in real situations. The real situation, for example, if, you're, if you want to get, if you want to boot up your MacBook and run Firefox, it's going to take away more than it boot from a CD and get into Firefox, which my product, my, my, my product does. It's, it's really fast. If you, if you do USB stick, it's like one minute. It beats the hell out of the Windows and, and, and MacBook or Apple software. So it's, it's, it's a better product for speed and performance already. So I don't have too much to worry about. Uh, it's true that uh, CDs are, of course, not that fast as hard disks, but um, since we have squ uh, squash FS, which is compressed, you don't need to... Um, the speed is not the importance, just the seek time. And if you have a machine which has uh, a lot of RAM, you can cache the whole image in the RAM by a boot parameter called to RAM, and then its uh, open office starts in, in three seconds. And my, my question is, uh, the every country user uh, makes a live CD. Uh, this means, uh, do you have a IATN framework? Uh, internalization framework? Uh, okay, uh, no, we don't have... We don't have an, an internationalization framework. We yeah. just uh, permit if the, um, the user of choose the, the, the right uh, options or the right uh, list of packages that includes also internationalization packages to have at the boot, a boot at boot time, uh, select uh, one type of languages, uh, uh, keyboard, locale. Mm. <laughs> I can't help but add that I have uh, versions of Web Converger for the Korean, Japanese, and Chinese markets. It's just a question of setting the right locale and putting extra packages for the font and the keyboard switching. It's really easy, so you can do, you can you can uh, meet the requirements of for, of internalization. There is a question over there. Uh, I'm sorry, I arrived a little bit later, so you might have already answered this, but I, I, uh, I've heard also Kai saying that he has custom uh, images. How easy it is to, def to create such an image if you just want to have some additional packages added on, on, that, on that image? You, you do you have to have your own repository which duplicates the Debian repository? It, it is uh, really easy because uh, if you just uh, want to add uh, some bunch of, of, of packages that is uh, not present in Debian, you could uh, just put them on, uh, on a directory which uh, it is created at the moment uh, of uh, the first uh, launch of Make Live. And they created a config directory and you will find a, a, a place where to put your packages. That, that sounds okay if you have only one or two th packages, but does that scale well for, let's say, a, a set of packages which I have in a repository which have... Yes, you can, you can uh, express uh, your private repository with um, the GPG keys too, so, uh, or your keyring package, so it is easy to do uh, Debian deriv derivatives. It is also easy to add the software that is not in Debian and not yet packaged. There is uh, some uh, helpers to do that too. Uh, they are not uh, so difficult to use. You can just throw in your uh, source list snippets uh, for whatever repository you want to use and uh, say, uh, get me these packages and it fetches them. Uh, it's not different. Uh, the whole build process is just uh, as you would install a normal system. It's just in a change route, but everything else is uh, just the same. And as you can see here, uh, in the config directory we have... What does it say? It's too small! <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>
Um, in the config directory, you can see we have different uh, direct uh, directories for the helpers. If you put something in change root, local, packages, um, then this package will be installed in your live system. If you put a file uh, with package names in change root, local, package lists, these packages get installed. If you put something into change root local hooks, this script gets executed at the end of the, of the change root phase. It's really flexible. It's just the shit that there is no mind page for it. But <laughs> if you know Dev Helper, uh, I don't want to say that Life Helper is as far as perfect as, uh, as Step Helper. But um, if you are familiar with um, Dev Helper, you won't miss so much. All right, so <clears throat> quick comment before my question. Uh, I've already made a few live uh, CDs and live DVDs, and, but uh, I'm really impressed by the, the tool set that you've created. It makes it a lot simpler, apparently. Um, if you could expand a bit more on the uh, auto builder you have, um, is that part of the tool set or is that something else? Thank you. It's basically just a cron script which calls um, Life Helper in a given interval, and all the, the the cron shops are in the package under user share, life helper, examples, cron. So you can easily set up your own. Um, there's another uh, Linux Twist version who, uh, who have live CDs. And they have uh, a tool to report and to test uh, the hardware on the, uh, on the computer, laptop, server, whatever. Uh, have you planned in some way to try to have uh, this feature that is to um, evaluate the compatibility of the local uh, uh, device present on the computer and to use those kind of database. Have you have used this kind of? Uh -huh. um, no, um, because um, Debian Life is not a distribution, it's just a framework, it means everything which works with Debian works with Debian Life CDs too, or whatever you use. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, the idea is to, to help users uh, evaluate their lap the, the compatibility of the laptop, the, the boot, the live CD on. Um, and of, of course, if it boots, it boots, and I understood. On a related note, there is um, a project LHCP, which means hardware, Linux Hardware Compatibility Project from Fedora. Um, um, they initiated this, and it's a set of Perl, uh, Python scripts which you run on a, a computer, and it works basically like Popcorn just for hardware. And it would be really nice if you can include that in Debian and also on the live cities, uh, so that you're uh, going to be asked on um, on after the installation or whatever, um, do you want to submit a hardware report to this site? And I think that's the way to improve uh, hardware uh, lists, uh, that you can say it's compatible or not. Um, because most of the Linux systems are uh, much identical, and we should do it in common. Do you support persistent storage on, for example, an USB stick? Yes, uh, persistent storage, storage could be any block device recognized by the kernel in uh, some file systems, not uh, all the file systems supported, but it's easy to, to extend. We support uh, Windows file systems and uh, most common Linux file systems. But uh, we plan to extend uh, to some file system user space uh, type of uh, flexibility. I think we... Two minutes. So, if you, there are some more questions, hey, here. Um, do you plan to support running Debian inside of, for example, a Windows system using, say, QEMU or um, other stuff like VMware or whatever? I think there are some Linux distributions supporting that now. I read this. We have uh, um, some uh, Windows Linux integration in uh, our to-do, but uh, for now it's uh, at the bottom of the, our uh, to-do list, and we plan to uh, investigate uh, CO Linux 
uh, to or different uh, ways of uh, uh, ship uh, Debian I have uh, easy for a Windows user to look at uh, what uh, is a live uh, system or what uh, a Debian boot uh, and the user look, could look, looks like. Uh, just a short addition, um, QMU images are basically hardware images, means if you uh, build a Debian live system for USB HDD, uh, then you can boot it in QMU. Um, as you know, you can boot them on Windows too. For VMware, you can boot them too. I mean, uh, VMware does use uh, QMU uh, image types, but has an additional file. Uh, that's a file with about 15 um, uh, configuration options, and that's really easy, and I'm looking forward to uh, implement this, that we have uh, automatically created this file, and then for the user it's uh, like download and click and it runs. Then we thank you, and maybe we see you. <laughs> maybe we see you tomorrow.